Last weekend, last Sunday, Father Sam talked of the Mary Poppins story as a sort of parallel, a parable even, of the Ascension event that we celebrate this night. That reference reminded me that as a child, I always read the last few chapters of a novel first. And if I judged the ending was sufficiently happy, then I'd consent to read it from the beginning. If not, the book would be discarded. Mary Poppins fell into the latter of these two categories. Her departure at the end from the Banks family at the conclusion, though her work was done, was seen by my younger self to be far too upsetting to read any further. Beginnings, middles, and ends, and their relationship seemed appropriate to me to this day and this feast. And I want to clarify that a bit further by talking about three mountains. In Ezekiel chapter 28, we have a version of the creation account. Eden here is transposed from a wide plain to a location on the holy mountain of God. Here, humanity is endowed with royalty, almost divine, with dignity, clothed magnificently, perfect in wisdom, blameless in their ways. But this glory is, of course, lost in the fall. Once, in Ezekiel's words, that iniquity was found in you, and you had to be cast out as a profane thing from the mountain of God, and the guardian cherub drive you out from the stones of fire. Our second mountain is that of the Transfiguration, Mount Tabor, where Christ is transfigured before his disciples and for a while reveals the divine glory that will once again shine forth in his resurrection. But of course, that act of transfiguration prefigures as well the ascension, when not only Christ is restored to his full glory at the right hand of the Father, but humanity too. Thus, the human race is finally transfigured on the Mount of Olives, restored to the lost glory of the first creation. And so this Feast of the Ascension we celebrate today completes the story. It provides a redemptive rolling back of the entire history of sin and of separation from God that was consequent upon the fall. This Ascension Day witnesses to a reestablishment of the Edenic order of creation, all things finally as the Creator intended them to be. So tonight is an ending worthy of its beginning, worth risking all the mess and drama of the middle, reassuring and comforting too, but challenging as well in its invitation for us to live now as worthy, as redeemed, as loved, and as sharing in the divine dignity and glory reunited with God, who lives and reigns, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end.